Alright guys, so in this video, I'll be doing entirely voiceover. I'm just experimenting with it because it's a lot easier to film when you're not having to explain things while you're doing them. And right here, what I'm doing is I'm just cutting out my shape for the mold. And then, as you'll see in a second, I just kind of push the whole thing um, right out and get the shape. It originally came on a much larger board, like 4 feet by 4 feet. And I cut it down just to this little rectangle, and then now I can get out my exact shape. Alright, and here's what it looks like once I knock down all the sides. And from here, I'm just taking a utility knife and shaping down the foam to the exact desired shape of my cast. And this can take a while. It took me roughly 30 minutes or so. It all depends on how intricate your design is. And just take it slow because the foam can tear and break. And from here, I'm just going to be packing it into the green sand. So I'm going to run a time lapse now, and then I'll show you guys after that. Alright, and here you can see I added a large square piece of steel, and I'm doing this instead of the flower pot because I realized the hole at the bottom of the flower pot was too restrictive for all the molten metal, and it just wasn't allowing enough of the copper to flow through, and I think that's why I had a failure last time. So hopefully this new idea should work well, and I'm pretty confident because you'll see here in a second, but what I'm going to do with the sand is I'm going to slope it all inward, right, um, leading directly to the bottom which will be the foam part in the center, which you can see right there. I'm using a flashlight to point. That's the foam part sticking up, and it might be hard to tell, but the sand is kind of sloped. So hopefully all the molten copper can just flow right into that, and I'll add some aluminum foil just to make sure there's no direct contact with the foam and sand. So now I'm adding in two pounds of thermite along with all the copper, and once that's all in, it's time to light. Alright guys, I thought it was worth noting here that the thermite burned so hot that it actually made the steel glow, which you can see right there. And I just did not expect this happening because that piece of steel was pretty thick and heavy, so that was pretty surprising to me. And I started to notice those green flames coming through, and what that is, is that's the copper burning because 
when it burns, it gives off a bluish green flame. And you could really see it there when I lowered down the brightness. And I just thought that was pretty cool. All right, so this pair of gloves was much too thin to pick up the steel pipe with. So I came back a couple minutes later with a much thicker pair of gloves that were all leather. And I thought I'd be fine then, but we'll see what happens. I kind of just try to bear through it. Now the reason why I'm not letting it cool all the way down is because I felt like if I let it cool all the way down, then the metal would completely harden and I wouldn't be able to break the copper cast away from the slag once I pull it all out. Because when I pull it all out, it's still all connected together and I don't have any tools to like cut through it. So I decided that I need to pull it out now while it's still cooling down and a bit weaker. I think we might have had a successful casting. We just gotta clean all the gunk off the surface and we'll see. This one looks a lot better. I just have to clean off all the sand and whatever that is on the outside and get it all off and we'll see how it looks. Okay, I forgot to film myself breaking away the copper dagger from the slag, but basically what I did is I just took the fire poker and just slammed it down hard until it broke through the entire thing. And the only piece left is that little chunk you can see there at the end. And also just take note of all the bumps and imperfections on the blade because you'll see later when I clean them all up, you can notice a very distinct change.
Now what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get off any sand or bits of slag. Basically anything that does not require a belt sander or bench grinder. I use a nail and a wire brush to scrape off what I can. And I use some clippers to remove any small deformities in the copper. Alright, fortunately for me, uh, I had a friend with a bench grinder and he offered for me to use it for my project, so that helps a lot because going into this, I thought I was just going to have to use my wire brush, my little one, just to clean up the whole thing so I knew I wouldn't get a good finish on it. So this helps a lot. And what I'm doing now is I'm going with the grinding wheel, trying to get off all the large lumps of copper that didn't like follow the mold. And then once I do that, and I kind of use that side to also smooth it up, I switch to the other side and use the wire brush wheel where I just try to polish and shine the surface. Alright, here you can see a nice comparison between the two casts. 
The one on the left was my first attempt, where I used the concrete as a mold, so definitely go with the green sand, not the concrete. And there you can see it weighs 24.51 ounces, which translates to just over one and a half pounds. And you can actually tell because like it's got some weight to it when you pick it up. It's a lot heavier than you'd think for its size. And there's the concrete one again. Just definitely not the way to go. It doesn't fill up the whole mold. And now I'm just going to give you a whole bunch of angles of this dagger, show you all different sides of it, spin it around, show you the entire thing. So I'll do that for a bit. And at the end, I'll show you a little brief comparison between the two, pretty short. And when I was doing this project, I was kind of thinking whether at the end I should do like a durability test and see, or at least just see how strong it is and like try stabbing cans or something. But I just decided I didn't want to risk damaging it. So maybe in the future I'd try that if I'd make another one out of aluminum or bronze and then compare the all the different types of materials for a durability test. But for now, I'll just show you all the different angles and yeah, that's about it. <laughs>